Hi, my name is Sarish Sudakaran and in this video, we'll analyze the cinematography of Sean Bobbitt. The goal is to break down his techniques so you have a starting place to learn more about his work. Sean Bobbitt had a solid foundation in news gathering and documentaries before he decided he wanted to focus full-time on feature films. And when he did, his vast experience dealing with unpredictable weather, humans, and equipment helped him work on low-budget films without having to compromise on his cinematography. Today he is most known for his collaborations with Steve McQueen, with whom he has done three movies. If you scout the internet, you cannot miss his masterclass on handheld camera work, and it is mandatory viewing for anyone who wants to shoot handheld. I'll link to it. Handheld fluid camera work is something he does so adroitly and gracefully, and it is an eye-opener to see how much effort goes into making a camera movement look effortless. Surprisingly, some of the directors he works with give him a lot of creative freedom. He loves the 2.39 aspect ratio, though doesn't shoot anamorphic for budget reasons. He is known to prefer the spherical 2 per format for its economy, and the fact that you can shoot 21 and a half minutes on one reel. There are quite a bit of long takes in most of the movies he shoots. It's always elegant, and doesn't have the rawness you associate with other kinds of handheld cinematography. You can almost feel the gentler hand guiding your focus to what really matters on film. He shoots predominantly on film, though nowadays everything's finished in the DI. He also shoots digital, using the Arri Alexa for Queen of Cutway. His favorite lens is the Cook S4, but he does occasionally shoot on other lenses as well. He also prefers to carry zoom lenses for his work, predominantly the Anjanu Optimos. He uses color as a prime driver of the story, the best example being Shame. But you can also see its influence in other movies, where small touches of color not only create complexity and help draw your eye, but are also subtly emotive, like an underscore. He has a keen eye for formal compositions. You'd have to look hard to find an ugly frame in Sean Bobbitt's work. He uses the widescreen to place characters for emotional impact, and his wide shots have a rigor that eases your eye into the scene without any ado. One common framing technique of his is to use parallel lines to bracket his actors. Another is a 90 degree shot for lack of a better term. This creates a powerful imbalance even though it's a balanced composition. His command over composition is highly valued by the directors he works with, because most of them don't prefer storyboards. He believes composition is 50% of cinematography, and this is something you can't miss in his work. He takes many photographs of the location while scouting so he can plan his lighting and camera movement. He grades them in Lightroom and discusses his ideas with the director. On exterior locations, he typically backlights his actors, and his signature technique is to have a back rim around his actors to separate them from the background. This even carries into his interior lighting shots, though he uses it sparingly. On most shots, he avoids backlighting for the sake of it. Another signature technique of his is a side rim light, which can be found in a lot of his work. The rim light is always motivated by the main source of light in the scene. He treats every scene like it is a steady cam shot, where the camera could go 360 degrees and point anywhere. He terms it area lighting, where he lights a scene to give the actors maximum freedom to move around in. There is always one main source of light, usually a window, and this guides the rest of the choices he has to make. The angle, color, and intensity of this source has to be believable, and it must work emotionally as well. He mostly prefers soft light, and when it comes to lighting faces, he uses a flattering three-quarters or side lighting pattern. The catch lights fall naturally, and he doesn't force it in every shot. He also lights from the top, if the location dictates that placement. The top light can vary from hard to really soft, and the actors walk into and out of pools of light. The contrast ratio is pretty high, often two stops or higher. One cool trick he has when lighting dinner tables is to shine spotlights like a Dita light straight down on the table. This bounces light back into the actors' faces as well as makes the food and drink interesting. The benefit of this technique is to preserve the ambient mood of a restaurant or club. Sean Bobbitt operates the camera most times and does not abuse his proximity to the actors. He never gives them directions, and even after the director yells cut, he sometimes continues rolling to catch an unexpected reaction from the actor, 
Most times you always see him smiling behind the camera, and I bet his warm nature carries over to his work as well. I hope this brief video makes you curious enough to learn more about the brilliant cinematography of Sean Bobbitt. The best way to learn more about him is to watch his movies and from his videos on YouTube. If there's a favorite cinematographer whose work you want analyzed, let me know. To see more videos like this one, please subscribe. There are lots more on the way. Bye now.